The new third edition of Process Dynamics and Control, published by Wiley, has accompanying chapter examples illustrated using LabVIEW from National Instruments. Let's look at three of those examples. In Chapter 2, students are asked to examine a stirred tank blending process in which the flow rates and mass fractions of two liquids can be varied. The figure in the book closely matches the LabVIEW front panel. When running the VI, students are able to independently control the flow rate and mass fraction of each liquid using vertical slider controls in LabVIEW. A chart tracks the composition values with the output composition shown here in blue. The color of the liquid in the tank also changes accordingly. Using this VI, students can gain an intuitive understanding of the blending process. The LabVIEW block diagram shows the dynamic model of the stirred tank running in a simulation loop. The tank model VI may be opened up to show its block diagram, where the numeric equations of the tank's response are shown. The simulation loop is part of the LabVIEW Control Design and Simulation module. In Chapter 5, students learn about the dynamic behavior of first and second order processes. An example of a vented storage tank for a continuous reactor is given, where once again the figure in the book is closely matched by a LabVIEW front panel. Students are asked to determine how long the reactor can operate before depleting the tank, which they can simulate using the flow rate slider controls on the front panel of the LabVIEW VI. The animation of this dynamic system can aid students' understanding of its response to different types of inputs. On the LabVIEW block diagram, students can see the type of ODE solver used in the simulation, in this case RK45. Both fixed and variable step size solvers are available. They can also examine how the step impulse functions are configured, as well as the transfer functions characterizing the effect of flow rate on the level in the tank. Transfer function coefficients may be wired into a terminal or entered manually in a configuration dialog. In Chapter 11, concepts regarding closed-loop control systems are introduced. Example 11.2 describes a liquid-level control system with proportional gain control. The accompanying figure is animated on the LabVIEW front panel, allowing the student to set a value for the desired level in the tank on the vertical slide control. A horizontal slide control is available for setting the proportional gain on the valve controller. Students can quickly see the effect of increased gain on the time response of the system after a step change in the level set point. The effect of gain on steady state response is also visible. The LabVIEW block diagram shows the closed loop control system in a simulation loop. A step input generates the requested change in tank level. A first order transfer function models the behavior of the plant. To illustrate the flow of data in the simulation, we can turn on execution highlighting. As the simulation runs, students can actually see all of the values passed along the block diagram. Execution highlighting is one of the many helpful debugging tools in LabVIEW. Closed loop simulation is easily visualized using the control design and simulation module in LabVIEW. By using these examples, faculty in process control courses can more effectively demonstrate the concepts in the third edition of Wiley's Process Dynamics and Control.